where Undertaker was only with WWF at that point for about two months when mm -hmm. you came in. Do you think it gave him maybe a comfort level to have you where he knew you in the past from world class at his side at ringside as opposed to someone like Brother Love? I don't know. I, I, would, I would hope so. Well, him and Brother Undertaker and Brother Love were, were certainly good friends too. Mm -hmm. And I can't say that me and the Undertaker were real good friends at that time. We had passed our paths at Cross mm -hmm. in Dallas. You know, I, I had managed him in his first match in the business against Bruiser Brody at the Sportatorium. We put a mask on him. We called him Texas Red. It's on YouTube. Google Bruiser Brody versus Texas Red, and you'll get to see The Undertaker's first match in wrestling with me as his manager at the Sportatorium in Dallas. I think it was about 87. But anyway, but as far as the question that you asked, I, I, I don't know. Uh, it, was just a na it was just natural. Th the things that we did that you saw us do, our entrances when we got in the ring, and I'd take his coat off and, and hold his hat, and it, it was stuff that we never rehearsed. It, it just happened. It was mm -hmm. just the chemistry. The chemistry was just perfect. And I, I was just, I don't have anything to say except I was just blessed. And, and what a run it's been. Early 91, you're starting off your house show runs. Undertaker was working with Boss Man, Tugboat, some oh. somewhat established guys just to try and build them up, build them up, build them up, build them up. What was the experience like going to MSG for the first time, Boston Garden for the oh, first time? God. All these places you never really get to work when you were down in Florida and <clears throat> world class and such. What was the difference in atmosphere from the territorial promotions to now, the I mean, national I, I always, you know, it was just natural. You always want to be at the top mm -hmm. of your game. I, when I was a, growing up, I wanted to get in the business. I, I always I read the magazines. You know about the after magazines right, earlier. Right. You'd read about Madison Square Garden. God, God, if I could only be a wrestler in Madison Square Gardens, you know, and that I'll never forget my first time I got my booking sheet, there it was, Madison Square Gardens. It was The Undertaker versus Tugboat. I won't, I won't remember the date, but it was Undertaker versus Tugboat. <clears throat> it was shortly after I had started there. And because uh, years, years ago, I'd always say, man, if I could just work Madison Square Gardens one time, that's, that's it. I'll be satisfied. I'll quit the business and, and I'll be, I'll never have to do anything again. But uh, I'll never forget, as soon as I, the first night that I worked Madison Square Gardens with The Undertaker, got back to the dressing room, the first thing I want to know is when we were coming back. <laughs> 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 so it was, what an experience to work in the Cow Palace in San Francisco, you know, in Chicago and in and, and Wembley Arena. Wembley yeah, Stadium yeah. in London, England, in front of 87,000 people. Just, I just never forget stepping through that curtain that night in Wembley Stadium. And, and just, I, I just don't have, I wish I had the vocabulary to explain it to you, what it, what it was like, you know, being a kid that wanted to be in this business, mm -hmm. to step out through the curtain with The Undertaker in 87, it was just breathtaking, it was just, the only thing that really saved me that kept me on track was is that if you remember that particular show, The Undertaker rode to the ring on the back of the, the hearse. hearse. Yeah, yeah. I had to walk <laughs> in front of the hearse. The hearse is behind me with The Undertaker on the back, and I'm walking with Aaron, you know, walking down the aisle, and the, the car, I just knew I was going to trip and fall. <laughs> I said, Lord, I was thinking the whole time, Lord, please don't let me fall. Please don't let me fall. If I trip and fall, that hearse is going to run over me on pay-per-view. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. But, gosh. And I've got to see, I've worked in every, I worked in all 50 states of the United States, wow. including Puerto Rico, Alaska, Guam, 30 countries, been all over the world, all because of wrestling. I've seen the Taj Mahal in India. I, all because of professional wrestling. Memorial Something, Hall in Melrose? Yeah, yeah <laughs> absolutely. And, 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 and you laugh, and you think it's, it is funny, but from the smallest National Guard armies, the smallest high school arenas, to... 87,000 people. It's, uh, it's, something, it all. it's something that, and I, and I use this word, I use it a lot. Bless. There, there's no other word to use. Is that I, I'm very, very, very blessed. Even at this point in my life that, you know, that we were talking about me losing my wife. Uh, she's been gone for two years. I'm getting ready to have a new granddaughter here in two months. Uh -huh. you, you lose things and, and the Lord continues to bless you. And, 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 and believe it or not, I, I am a a, a man of faith, and I'm very proud of that, and I believe in the man upstairs. And uh, 
it's, it's all about blessings and, and whatever occupation or, or, or whatever you do in your life and take what you got and, and, and make the best of it and move on. I, I, I couldn't jump in the grave with my wife. I, I had to continue on. I had kids and grandkids and uh, I've been very, very blessed in this business and I'm continued to being blessed. Like this last, my, my last run, I just come off of. Uh, they called me in June <coughs> of 2010 uh, and, and asked, as they said, they had me on a conference call with the, the creative department, WWE. <coughs> they said, Percy, we have an idea. Do you have any, in, do you have any, do you want to come back at all? I didn't even take a breath. I went, nope. <laughs> but they did because they don't get no very often. When WWE calls you to come up, come up you, you don't get too many no's, but I, I, after what I've been, I, I had taken my part, my life at that point, especially my WWE career, and put it up on the shelf with all the DVDs, mm -hmm. you know, all the pay-per-views and all the WrestleManias that I'd been in, and I had pretty much been away for, for four years from, from, from the company. I still maintain contact with Undertaker and those guys, but I didn't, I, di I didn't want to, to go back on the road anymore. I, I, I had been there, I had done that, and, and I, I'm older, and the knees hurt more, you know, and the, there's gray in the hair, and I, and I just, and, and the, the talent roster is so young, and I just couldn't see, I just couldn't see myself, especially going back full time. And uh, so we had a discussion for about a month where we narrowed it down to where I was just gonna do pay-per-views and television TV shows and pay-per-views, and uh, I wouldn't go have to go on the road. I, I just couldn't. I could. I get, if I had, absolutely had to do it, I could have done it. But folks, you just don't have any idea. John knows. Uh, uh, John Jr. Uh, what it's like to go on the road for two or three weeks at a time. Leave your home. Leave your family. Leave your pets, and put everything on hold, and travel. Even and travel, you know, to wherever, all over the world. And uh, it, people think all that glitters certainly isn't gold. It's a hard, hard job mm. to do what these guys do. <clears throat> the, 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 like I, the wrestlers, the, they have to train, they have to eat right, they have to go to the gym. Not, notwithstanding the travel schedule, you know, the, 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 if, any, if any of you folks have flown recently, you know, especially mm. since 9-11, uh, and just the travel part, it's just, it's just, gosh, you should get paid just for your, just for traveling is extremely difficult. And, and I, I just didn't want, want to do that anymore. But we worked out a little deal where I, I was just, I was, was short, you know, so a lot of the fans just had a fit, when, you know, when we'd done the final segment there with Kane there at the end, the last month where Edge kidnapped me. I had a blast. That last month when Edge kidnapped me, I look forward. We had so much fun doing that stuff. While I was riding, you know, because I was had taped up in the wheelchair. King, King, you know, I was having a blast. And if you know me, you could see that I was having fun. We were having fun. Vince himself produced those segments. They have a crew of writers, you know, probably 10 to 15 writers that normally do that kind of stuff. But Vince personally produced each one of those segments that we done, and, and we had so much fun. But I, I didn't want to go back. But after I made the decision to go back, we made the decisions, you know, money-wise and what I was going to do. And, and, and okay, okay, okay. And uh, WWE is extremely high on, which they should be, on their, their wellness program. You know, a lot of guys have had a lot of problems. And, and uh, they just don't take a, a, pick a restaurant off the street and throw them on television. Uh, they, they, just for me, for example, they, they flew me to Pittsburgh to the University of Pittsburgh Medical Center or whatever where their wellness program is run from and I had to go through medical tests even though I was just a manager and I, head to toe for everything for concussions everything A to Z they, ch they check you out from top to bottom imagine that did that excite you? Mm -hmm. He smiled. You see him smile? <laughs> so I, he smiled. So oh. I, I, I told myself that if, if I pass all these medical tests that it was meant to be, that, that, I, that it was meant for me to come back. And I prayed about it and, and, and asked the Lord's guidance and, 
And I said, uh, if I passed all the medical tests, it was meant for me to go back. And my final question to myself was, well, what would Diane want? My wife, Diane, who passed away, what would, what would Diane tell me? And that was the answer to it all. She said, get your fat butt back on the road where you belong. Because she knows how much I loved it. And so that's what I did. So I went back. And a lot of, like I was going to say a minute ago, which I went off on a tangent, a lot of the fans were so upset that my run was so short. And it was, it was right at six months, but I didn't, it, it, was, it was what we planned. It was not the Vince, oh, Vince just screwed Percy, threw him off TV. That wasn't the case. That was the plan. We had planned that. Uh, Undertaker was, was seriously injured, and, uh, which he has been numerous times during the tw this past 20 years where he's had to take time off and have surgery. <laughs> This is Mick Foley. This is Harley Race. This is Shelton Benjamin. This is Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff. This is the Monster Abyss. And this is Daniel Bryan. This is JBL and you're watching the MWF. Be there live.